What's up everyone? It is Big Poner and today I'm going to be teaching you guys uh, what it is that I'm doing to make to make currency. Um, so if you guys have been following the previous advice that I gave, you should be somewhere around where I am. Uh, my advice was to focus early on map completion. The reason for this, there was a bunch of reasons. Um, the first one being obviously jumping into heist with a build that Athena. One second. Um, the first one was obviously jumping into heist with a build that's not in a finished state. You know, you risk wind up spending time getting loot and then dying and losing that loot, so that could wind up being um, just a big loss of currency. Then also there was like I guess what people are calling like a shadow nerf um, to the currency. Um, from the heist so that made it even worse to be playing the heist as far as currency early game I have spent some time um, doing heist and honestly the the currency generation has been horrible um, so I've been focusing on what I know works for me I haven't had any big lucky drops but I'm consistently generating currency I played this morning before the patch um, I made like six or seven exalts this morning. Uh, six, yeah, about like six, seven, but somewhere in between there, six, seven exalts. Um, so I'm making I'm making currency consistently, and I haven't had any big drops yet. Um, hopefully that those will come. Um, we'll talk about giving yourself those chances to get the big drops. You know, I ran Shaper Elder, didn't get anything from them. Oh, actually, I did. I got. Oh no, I got. That was, I got absolutely nothing from Shaper Elder. I got a Cinder Swallow um, earlier from my Mastermind, which was like 60 Chaos. Um, so on the unlucky end of that, that was pretty much the cheapest drop that could have dropped from Mastermind. Um, but all of this stuff that where you're guaranteeing yourself currency and giving yourself the chance for big drops, that's how you guarantee that you're going to do well. Yes, you can go for this. I'm hoping that I'm the lucky one and I get the the big drop and you invest into that and then if it doesn't happen then you wind up in a situation where you're like where you're like I've spent a bunch of time investing in this I haven't been lucky and I've lost out um, so I like to give advice that's gonna help everyone that uses the advice so that is gonna be the advice in this um, I will be doing this for uh, probably a, a couple more a couple more days game sessions I am gonna get into heist I do have some tips and stuff like that for heist, but I'm going to have to retest it because we just got another patch. I was actually going to do a video on it, but I was having issues with um, my recording my recording equipment. Um, so I wasn't able to release videos for a little while. Um, so I'm going to have to, so I can't make that content now without retesting. So I'm going to have to do some heist. I will eventually wind up going through all the heists and stuff like that, but that's not what this video is about. Let's go ahead and get into that. Um, map completion, big deal. Map completion is a big deal because um, as we scale these up, we get more map drops. Um, obviously, the higher Awakener level, which I'm on my last Watchstone um, for this, so I'll have my Awakener 8. I kind of messed up in one of my runs, and I spawned in the wrong place, so I've done five series now, and I'm on Awakener 7, so, so we, we make mistakes sometimes. Um... Anyways, once you get to a pretty good completion, you're not going to have any issues with maps. Maps will start piling up. Like I, I'm starting to get to a place where you know my maps are starting to to just go up. The more I play, the more maps I'm going to get. Just plain and simple. Um, so that no longer is an issue at all. Um, still, if I get a map that I need completion for, uh, immediately going to run that because the higher the completion, the more maps we get, the more rewards we get based on, on the bonuses. So let's talk about the Masters as far as early game. The Masters, we want to be using these um, a lot um, because they're the most valuable early. We're going to go ahead and go through the currency on, on this stuff. First of all, it's a combination of mapping well, working towards Conquer and Seer's Kills. Why is it that we, our goal is to be killing as many Conquerors and Seer's as we can? Why is that the goal? We're going to go ahead and take a look at the reason why that is. Okay, 
so we obviously have all of the the orbs um awakeners orb obviously the most expensive hunters crusaders they're all over in exalt these are actually pretty low prices i'm actually thinking that the prices on these are going to actually go up um a good amount probably quite a bit as more players start getting to a place where they want where they want to um, start actually crafting dual mod influence items. I think the reason why it's kind of slowed down on this type of stuff is because we just came out of the League of Harvest, so I think a lot of people are even less um, in tune to how to craft and stuff like that than they would have been in any normal season, even if they're not normally crafters. And the reason why is because Harvest was just like a whole new way to craft, and like so now I think there's not very many people crafting because a lot of people that may have not been really good at crafting are probably now completely lost because they were just like harvest 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 and now it's like uh <laughs> um, now we're back to regularly crafting and you know it, it might be hard for people to get back into those I will get out crafting videos to help you guys out once I start doing those types of crafts um but yeah these are obviously drops all of the these orbs, these four orbs drop from the Conquerors, and then the Awakener's orb drops from, from Sirius. So they're, they're, they're not gigantic drops, but they're big drops. Um, oh, well, bigger than an Exalt. So the big drops for farming this stuff comes in in the skill gems. The highest one being the Awakened, um, the Awakened Multi-Strike. That's like half of a, that, that is half of a headhunter. So you have the possibility to, to get 26 exalt drop. Um, that's a really big drop. And jewels like this, there's always going to be a few jewels that are just super, super high cost. You can see some of these. These are really big drops. Um, and every time you kill a Conqueror or Sirius, you have a chance to get a Awakened Gem. I unfortunately have not seen a single Awakened Gem. And you're talking about 25, 25, 25. And I'm, I'm on my 26 total chances. So I've been unlucky on that. Um, but most people aren't that unlucky. Most people aren't going to get 26 kills with no drop. Um, which I haven't seen Awakener's Orb. I haven't seen uh, Conqueror's Orb. I haven't seen any Awakened Jewels. That's really bad luck. I would say that, that in general you're going to have better luck than that. Um, but these are obviously big drop chances. There's other good drops that come from these. Well just from Sirius we have um, the we have the sword that drops that I believe is still at least a couple exalts yeah savior 2.5 exalts this is another chance for something to drop um, I think certain sizes of the of the jewel that he drops are valuable um, it, those are kind of hard to check the, the price on, so I'm not going to actually check those unless I actually get one. Um, but I know every league, some of them are more expensive than others because whatever build is popular that's using them, those are going to be the more sought after ones. Um, so while we're here, we're going to go ahead and look at Jun. Jun is really good early game. Jun is not something that I really farm except for early game. There's a reason why I farm it early game. The reason why I always farm in early game is because I want all of the mods unlocked. Having mods unlocked so that you can craft stuff for yourself is a really big deal. You get a new upgrade and you've got an open slot and you need something. Just being able to put it on is super beneficial for yourself. Also, if you're selling an item, putting a high value stat on it is going to make it more likely to get bought. Especially, especially this league. Why is that? Because a lot of people are playing heist which that means they're not going to have you know all their stuff unlocked because they're not farming maps which means they don't have the masters they're going to get some veiled stuff to 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 identify but they're not going to have everything unlocked and they're most likely going to have none of the 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 rarer ones and stuff that's like specifically locked to um, mastermind or stuff like that those they're definitely not going to have because they're locked to those encounters. The other reason why pumping Jun, outside of the utility of it, the potential for crafting to make something more valuable, the other thing that makes it um, valuable is because there's not a lot of people mapping, there's not a lot of people doing these master missions, things like par the Paradoxical Rapier, that's the cheapest one of their drops outside of the flask. Um, so one exalt, that's something you can pretty much expect. Well, you're guaranteed to at least get half an exalt or close to an ex, like 75% of an exalt because the, 
the mastermind has to drop you one of a few items the cheapest one being the flask um which is the cinder swallow at 60 chaos um which right now is 75 percent of an exalt um so so that's that's your cheapest reward on top of all of the rooms that are going to be giving you drops also so mastermind right now is actually pretty profitable because you're guaranteed that base of of something that's going to be valuable the best drop i believe is going to be the diadem and the reason why this is still got so much value to it this late in the league once again three three exalts um the reason why this is keeping its its value it's been between two to four exalts the whole league inside of the pc community and i think it's going to stay in that range um for a while longer and the reason why is because once again i think a lot of people are started off or were spending time in heist or continuing to spend time in heist so they're not generating as many of the master missions so they're not there's not as many people getting to mastermind and i think because blade vortex was really popular last league it's really popular this league a lot of people are playing the the physical blade vortex for the poison builds which means a lot of people are going for the diadem which means a lot of people need it there's not a lot of supply making it a drop that if you get it you're going to be able to sell it if you price it at a uh, um at, at a fair market value so that's another that's another good thing to be aware of um obviously if you pay attention to the to the um to the to the syndicate chart you can actually make even more um something like this you can just you know how i don't want to agree to some stuff there should just be a picture um reddit maybe maybe reddit can pull through the point oh we've got we got some right down there all right here we go so this basically tells you the rewards that each one of the masters give and then leveling them up this actually isn't the best this picture kind of describes it but it doesn't give you the percentages so this isn't a very good one there should be one on the wiki all right here we go the game pd one i think this one okay yeah here we go so th that picture kind of outlines it good for you but if you pay attention to the syndicate um if you put the stuff in the right places you can get yourself some advantageous stuff like as i've i've been doing it you know i added the 28 percent quality to my armor it's just a little bit of extra um evasion through the quality um so so stuff like that um i added four percent to my bow um it doesn't help me at all but i just did it because i don't have anything else to put it on <laughs> um so that's something you can pay attention to upgrading um uh, upgrading upgrading breach stones or you can go for for chances to chances to craft stuff through tiny's tiny's trial like give yourself a chance one of my friends was saying try tiny's trial for crafting um the, the jewels, some of the jewels, like the, the cluster jewels, are really expensive this league, like 3 to 10 exalts. Um, so, you know, if you get Tiny's Trial, maybe try try a base, like a blank base, to try and make something sweet. Um, th th there's ways to make currency off of, off of the Syndicate. Um, and the thing is, is it's just something that you're basically adding to your to the farming, the currency that you're getting from mapping um as it is so alva let's talk about alva alva is one of the masters that i don't actually ever do her temple past early league the reason why early league she's got um she's got stuff in her temple that you need to unlock recipes um also early early league the temple is really profitable early league when you compare it to the other ways that you can earn currency so early league I always make good temples. I pay attention to what I'm connecting to make sure I can get full clears. Um, I focus on what rooms I'm upgrading. Um, once I get all my my unlocks, I focus on like breaches, monoliths, you know, things that add more quantity, give me more stuff. Um, obviously, always the, the the sacrifice table. If you can get that up to max level, um, those those are always valuable. The reason why I don't focus on actually making good temples once I get later on in the game is because 
once I have a super completed map and I'm doing farming at high completion and stuff like that, the temple takes so much time for me to clear um, and the rewards don't scale like you can scale mapping because like in end game mapping, you're, you know, four chiseled, then you're alking, then you're volleying, then you're adding scarabs, you're adding a bunch of stuff to it. And the map itself is more profitable than, than the, than the, um, than the, the Alva temple. What I do start saving my Alvas for is once I get to this place where the Alva isn't that profitable, I stop doing them. And I begin stockpiling them up. And the reason why is because I save them for when I start doing Delirium. Like last league when I started doing 100% Deliriums, I had like 150 Alvas. Obviously this league we won't be able to stock up as, of, as many of her because we had Harvest last league that was giving us extra chances to get uh, Masters, which we don't have that this league. Um, so I'm going to start saving my Alvas now. Um, what ones will I continue to pump? Which I'm not saying don't don't start saving it if you're still in this place where you're like I'm not making very much currency mapping. I'm saying once you get to that place where you're kind of like eh the rewards in Alva don't seem that great compared to what I'm making just playing. That's when you should start saving them and then only use them as a way to boost up the the amount of monsters inside of your delirium maps. So that's something to pay attention to. Einhar, I love him. He's he's awesome because you add him to maps. He just adds quantity, extra drops, um, and then you get beasts. Um, some of the beasts are pretty valuable. You're you don't you don't see them that often, um, but we do get some beasts that that add value. And the thing is, it's just another thing to kill while you're running through the map. And you could wind up getting a valuable beast. Um, obviously, the plague arachnid's the most expensive. And there's not really, really very many others that are, are valuable, but the Ferric, Ferric Wolf and the, the Ferric Lynx, these are really useful for crafting. Um, and in my crafting this league, I will be using a bunch of them. So if you have Einhars, pump them because it might stock you up on some of these useful beasts that you could use. If you get something more expensive that you're not going to wind up using, you could sell it and boost your currency or you could save it. Um, but most people aren't going to be doing trying to duplicate um, blue items, so um, that's probably not going to be useful for you unless you already know about it, and then you're probably going to be like, yeah, I'm going to use that right away. <laughs> um, so Xana. Xana is my girl. <laughs> um, so early she helps us advance in the Atlas, unlock um, maps that we haven't unlocked yet. She helps us get completion really high really fast um, she's super useful once we get to a point where we've kind of gotten to like a nice completion like i'm not finished i've got more i can get i got 22 more um, map completions and my obviously my awakener is not very good um but once you get to a place where you're kind of like farming you only want to be opening up xana on tier 15 or tier 16 the reason why, and I pretty much only open tier 16, especially if if fragments have any kind of decent value to them, which right now they do. Um, the reason why is because half of the um, of the guardian maps are only available on tier 16 maps. So if you open it on a tier 15 map, then you will have only about half of the maps that she offers will be a tier 15 and you might have like half of them are tier 16. What this means is the half that didn't go tier 16, which sometimes none of them will, but that's very, very rare. Normally it's like 50, 50. Um, the reason why it, that I go with just the tier 16s once I'm in, a, in an end game state with my Xana is because she's going to give me a chance that every one of the maps that she's offering has a chance to be one of the eight guardian maps. Um, because <laughs> all of those maps are able to have guardians on them. If I do a tier 15, then only 75% of, of the maps that I'm getting have that, have that full well, 50% of them have the full chance. The other ones have 25%, so it's only 75% of the chance that I could have had 
if I had gone with the tier 16. So that's the reason why I do that. What is the only reason to go with the tier 15? The only reason to go for a tier 15 is because it gives a natural chance for uh, Cortex. Um, Cortex is like 2EX, but honestly, um, like I maybe see Cortex like like once, um, like maybe like once or twice a league, and I map a lot every league, so I wouldn't really be banking on that. Um, and I think that the that the number of lost guardian maps versus the two ex, because if I lose eight, if I lose eight guardian maps, um, eight guardian maps, um, then then I've lost the value of that cortex basically in just guardian maps. Um, so that is something to consider is what does he want you want the more consistent b reward or do you want to kind of mi guaranteed miss out on some reward to try to have a, a better chance to get a cortex map that's kind of the question that you have to ask yourself um because it's not really that much of a better chance you can still get cortex on a tier 16 drop um so yeah that that's kind of the only way out. I would say just go with tier 16, but there is some validity to. There's like, I have to put it out there that that, that there is some hypothetical to to doing that. Um, but tier 16s can spawn any of the any of the lower tier unique maps. So uh, I don't know. I would say go. Uh, I'm only using tier 16s. That's what I would do. I'm just putting that out there. Okay. So we've talked about masters. Um, as far as farming, the thing is, is once you have gotten all of your atlas stones, um, I kind of told you guys how to do this. Like when you're spawning your your influences, you need to look at these. This is the only one that I have not obtained on. All my other ones are obtained. That's why I started off by going after this one because it spawned the conquer that I needed on it. The reason why I got stuck here and am five series in and haven't um, finished is because I wound up hitting a map and um, it put the, the one influence that I needed left onto a different map. So learn from that mistake. I'm reiterating it so that your atlas um, will go as smooth as possible, which my atlas went pretty smooth, um, but it could have been smoother if I just hadn't made that one mistake and opened a map. What it was was I had the right map, I evolved it, it changed the type of map, and then on that one map, it spawned the only influence that I needed. Um, so it made me do a whole set without having that last stone. So that sucked. <laughs> um, so the um once you get to this point as you can see i'm using i'm using my i'm using sextants now so once you start to getting to a decent completion place this is when you're going to be pumping your atlas mods um until you can unlock blight a hundred percent you should be punching um you should be using fortune favors the brave the reason why is because the value that it's adding to the map, there's over over not even that long of a run, you're pretty much guaranteed to be making good currency um, because it has the ability to give you both the Blight and the Delirium, um, which is 8 Chaos and 14 Chaos. I will say I could actually push to get the Delirium unlocked and start using it. The reason why I haven't is because right now Blights are really profitable to run. And it's actually working out really well um, doing the doing the blight. I like farming blight relatively early in the league. People are still buying oils. Um, I'm able to sell oils. This is pretty much how I'm making currency is I'm just farming conquers and cirrus and farming blight maps that drop for me. And I'm, you know, like I said, about six to seven exalts um, so far today, um, like pre-patch. Um, so... I'm going to be pumping Blight for a while. The reason why is because we're talking about 14 Chaos. And the thing is, is if I want to do Blight, the Blight Orbs are not that expensive relatively this league. Um, and the reason why is because they had a lot of them dropping um, from... They had a lot of them dropping in Heist. And I don't think a lot of people are running them. So we have pretty low prices. I mean, you're talking about, like, a, a lot of these Blight Orbs are actually less than the cost of putting Blight on your Atlas for, for like, a mirror inside of it. 
So that's kind of what makes me not want to use that. Also, the value of the Exalted Orb is so low that 14 Chaos right now is seems really really high we're now under adc for an exalted orb so that's kind of when exalted orbs go up in price because inevitably they will they will they'll they'll go up um they'll be worth you know 150 chaos up you know normally the peak it normally peaks in like mid league around like 180 to 220 chaos when it gets to that point when more people are like using exalted orbs um you know when it gets to that point and there's more chaos in the league then the value of the exalted orb is going to um go up but right now because it's low <laughs> it's like you're basically burning an exalted orb every five five and a half um five and a half five and a half ads uh, i don't know and you know even if you wind up getting a delirium orb more than likely the delirium orb isn't even gonna pay i think over half of them are less than the cost or about half i mean you're you there's a good chance to lose currency um just based on you know what the drops are and stuff like that and because it, it's really because I could just buy these orbs for less than the cost, which means instead of running Delirium, I could just buy a, an orb, add it to every map that I'm playing, and play level 1 Delirium, which would give me two rewards. It would give me one reward and an extra reward for less than the price of adding Delirium to the map. So that doesn't make sense to me. Um, because then I'm not rushed. I'm going to guarantee get to finish it as long as my character is able to finish it, which I tested yesterday. Um, well, not at not at 20%, but if you're able to do it, this is something else you could think about doing. The only thing about this is you're probably going to want to try and be able to buy them in quantity because if you're buying an orb every single time you're running a map, that's going to shoot your efficiency way down. Um, and the extra rewards for all the extra time that you're putting in is probably going to tank it, um, tank your actual your actual earnings quite a bit. But this is something you could consider doing also um, until you get to a place, you know, if you want to do that 100% delirium farming where you can do that. Um, okay. So that's pretty much what you want to be doing. That's pretty much what I have been doing, what I'm going to be doing. Um, and I've gotten my build into a place where I'm comfortable at 40% delirium. I could probably I could probably pit push comfortably up to 60%, maybe 80% pretty comfortably complete every map. I'm not comfortable for 100%, so I need to get more um, upgrades on the character. But it's, it's nice that I've progressed to that point. And then if I want to jump into Heist, my character is now really strong. So Heist is going to be easy. Um, so once I do that testing, I'm not going to have a lot of losing my, my currency and stuff like that. Um, so this is what I'm doing. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Share it. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Peace.